Let me know when it's up. I think it's up, yeah? yeah. Awesome. Well, good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are enjoying Sub-Zero, uh, Bangkok, Thailand. It's definitely an exotic place to have one of these conferences. And it's also so important to kind of get out of the Europe, North America world and showcase Polkadot and the technology in, in other parts of the, of the world. Um, so for today, I wanted to present past, present, and future of DeFi on Polkadot. Um, Nicholas Arevalo, most people know me as Nico in the ecosystem. I've been already in Polkadot for around three years. Um, so I'm co-founder and CEO of Velocity Labs, previously head of DeFi at Parity Technologies, and previously I was director of business development at Akala. So I do have kind of a bird's eye view of what has happened in the ecosystem, specifically around DeFi from the inception of parachains. So that's why I wanted to, to talk about today. So this is a bit of the agenda. So again, past, uh, take a trip down memory lane, remember how Polkadot started, how the first parachain started to launch, how the perception in the overall Web3 ecosystem was towards Polkadot and parachains, what the idea for the launch was. Then we'll go to the present, where we are right now, specifically related to the pain points that we're currently seeing in the Polkadot ecosystem, as well as the opportunities and the tailwinds. Then we'll touch a little bit on the future, uh, on what it has in store for, for Polkadot. And then I'll intro Velocity Labs and give you a little bit of context of what is the, 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 the gap that we're filling in the, in the ecosystem. So how it all started. Um, so just for, just for context, uh, the Genesis block of Polkadot was around, I believe, May 2020, if I'm not mistaken. And then initial parachain crowd loans started in November 2021. At that point, there was a lot of hype around Polkadot. I don't know if you, you, if you guys were around, but Polkadot at that time was kind of being presented as the solution of the blockchain trilemma, uh, a very innovative architecture that would be decentralized, it would be interoperable, and it would be scalable without having to compromise any of the three. And that started to obviously bring in a lot of builders, a lot of capital, a lot of interest. And we started seeing it with Akala. Akala, as I mentioned, previous employer, my first project in Polkadot, at that point was the first parachain that launched on, on, on the ecosystem. And it started producing blocks the 18th of December of 2021 after winning a crowd loan with $1.3 billion. So that's just to give you a sense of the amount of hype that was around the ecosystem and how much expectations the DeFi community had on Polkadot. Akala, at that point, they were selling themselves as uh, DeFi infrastructure. Um, they had a super interesting value proposition that was really showcasing the power of uh, customization with Substrate. They had uh, DeFi primitives at the Substrate layer and they were planning on launching an EVM plus to build applications that would leverage that infrastructure. They, wanted, they were one of the pioneers actually of HiFi, or how some other people call it, the DeFi mullet, where it's FinTech in the front and DeFi in the back. And they had a great partnership with Current.com, um, a neo bank from, from New York, where Current was gonna use Akala as yield infrastructure. Uh, for a proof of concept in, 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 in a yielding account. So super interesting products. Then we also had Moonbeam, which was the second parachain that launched. They were obviously the first one to have EVM compatibility. It became kind of the entry point for users, liquidity in the early stages of the ecosystem. Um, a lot of the first applications in DeFi were launched on, on Moonbeam, given that they really kind of piggybacked in the economies of scale and networking effects of the EVM. Um, and also a lot of bridges were connected to, to Moonbeam, so it made it kind of the, the entry point of the ecosystem. We also had Interlay, which was a decentralized bridge. Obviously the idea of having the biggest market cap asset, which wasn't really viable in DeFi, given that the only representation that we have is RAP BTC through a centralized custodian. Uh, the Interlay team, very, very technically savvy, they developed a decentralized bridge, which would bring IBTC, a decentralized version of Bitcoin, into Polkadot to be able to uh, have DeFi products around Bitcoin. Then we had Hydra, 
uh, a next-gen DEX. It was the first app chain DEX in the ecosystem that launched. Again, also showcasing the power of substrate and customization. Um, and then lastly, it was back in the day when real world assets weren't a thing. They were the pioneers of real world assets and they were in Polkadot, which was Centrifuge. Um, it was also kind of the poster child of BD on Polkadot because they had the perfect example of a application on Ethereum, which got decent traction, decent TVL, and they very early on noticed how this wasn't going to scale. They pivoted into, into Polkadot. They were the, one of the first ones to run a substrate solo chain, and then later on became a, a, a pair chain. So where did all this hype end up, right? <laughs> so I'm calling it the false start. Uh, it's known for the people that have been around that Polkadot hasn't been the best at timing the market. Unfortunately, we launched a little bit like midway, halfway through DeFi summer. So as I mentioned, um, Akala started producing blocks on the 18th of December of 2021, and then actually started ramping up some of the products like the stablecoin, the DEX, uh, the liquid staking token at around January, February. So that's when we see that big jump on aggregate TVL for Polkadot. So we were kind of running the hype. Uh, we were kind of meeting expectations. And we had a good run. We had a good uh, three, three months of really ramping up liquidity. But unfortunately, we had the Nomad hack, which was kind of the first big hit that the ecosystem had. Um, Moonbeam, as I mentioned, was being used as the entry point of the ecosystem. It was the only uh, parachain with actual bridges to outside ecosystems. And they did kind of focus their efforts around Nomad. Uh, and I don't blame them. Nomad at that point was probably one of the most technically savvy uh, bridge teams. And they had super good tech. But unfortunately, we're very early and these technologies are very fragile. They had a smart contract bug and uh, the the bridge got, got drained. So you obviously see the big hit. Uh, we started recuperating. You see that like around middle of 2022, AUSD started to catch traction. At that point, I was still on a call and I was the one in charge of actually uh, promoting AUSD to the ecosystem both within Polkadot and outside of Polkadot, and it was a self-selling product. Everyone was very bullish on its mechanism, its vision of being interoperable, et cetera, et cetera. So we did start to see some integrations going on, and again, unfortunately, it was a human error uh, on the on the code, which uh, created the the AUSD DPEG, and it had rippling effects across the ecosystem. So. Two big hits. Uh, at that point, the market started to get shaky already. That was post um, UST Terra DPEG as well. Then to end it off, we had the multi-chain hack, which wasn't that impactful to the ecosystem. But later after that, it was the FTX debacle. And then that last piece of the graph, you can see which is the bear market that we've, we've all been at this, this day. So now the question is, are we ready? And this leads me to the present. Where, where are we today? Where is Polkadot? Where were our lessons from the past? Um, what are the pain points? And, and what are actually the, the, the benefits of Polkadot versus the competition? So this is what I called, starting for, for the negatives and to end on a, on a high note. So this is what we call the Polkadot's negative flywheel effect which is currently what we feel the DeFi ecosystem in Polkadot is. So starting up with one, high entry barriers to both developers and users. On the developer side, it's known that Polkadot is, is, is pretty complex, uh, not only in its tech tag, its, its substrate, um, but, it, but it's also a complex ecosystem to navigate. On the user side, um, it's, it's very hard to bring liquidity into the ecosystem. There aren't enough bridges right now. Still, as I mentioned, the, the reality still remains. Um, Moonbeam is kind of the main entryway uh, of liquidity and users from other ecosystems into Polkadot, but users land on Moonbeam, right? They don't really land on other pair chains, although they did innovate with uh, Moonbeam Router Liquidity, which some pair chains are using, but we see that as a, as a stopgap solution and not definitely the, the end state. Then that leads to number two, which is the lack, lack of tooling. So we have a complex um, architecture, a complex tech stack, and there hasn't been a lot of tooling developed across that to be able to abstract that complexity for the developer and the user. Then the third thing 
is there's a lot of gaps on basic infrastructure. Infrastructure in this context is bridges, as I mentioned, centralized exchange support, on-ramp support, oracles, indexers, et cetera, et cetera. We do have a lot of these kind of built in natively, uh, but others that aren't built natively that you have to integrate from outside, uh, they just see Polkadot as, again, a complex ecosystem to integrate with, um, high steep learning curve, and with low liquidity, they don't really see kind of the ROI of coming to our, to our ecosystem. And it becomes kind of a chicken and the egg problem, right? You don't have centralized exchanges, you don't have bridges, you don't have liquidity, you don't have users, and then because of that, you don't have centralized exchanges, you don't have bridges. Um, and then that leads to four, which, which is no, no killer app in Polkadot as, as of today. So um, there's a lot of interesting products, which I mentioned initially, and we have more. That was just the beginning. We have a lot more interesting teams building very cool stuff. Uh, but to their credit, we haven't, as an ecosystem, I mean, we haven't really given them the tools to be able to succeed. There is a lot of friction for these teams and products to actually bootstrap themselves and actually focus on the product. There's a lot of maintenance. There's a lot of infrastructure things that they have to care about. And that has led to no killer apps in, in Polkadot right now. So now into the positives. What are the ecosystem tailwinds that we currently see today? And, and, and there's a lot. They're just not talked about outside of Polkadot, but there's a lot. The first one is we built the right tech stack and architecture to build truly unstoppable and scalable DeFi applications. DeFi, and this applies to any vertical, right? Uh, we noticed it with the inscription phase uh, that happened a couple months ago where Polkadot fared the best against any ecosystem. We haven't had out uh, outages. Uh, the shared security model has been validated. It's, it's the thing that should be shared. Security and liquidity should be shared. Um, so it's definitely like a place to build unstoppable um, and scalable DeFi applications. Also, the, the space in general has validated those ideas and those early design decisions. If you look outside of Polkadot, shared security, interoperability, customization, app chains have become the norm, right? Not so long ago, everyone thought that everything was going to be on Ethereum or Solana. Now today, it's clearly that the consensus is we're going to have a multi-chain, multi-sharded, heterogeneous architecture. And we've had that from inception. The third thing, and it's very applicable to this conference after yesterday's talk from Gavin, we have a very flexible architecture, which makes it future-proof, right? We don't know what we don't know. And this space moves very, very quickly, as well as user demands. We have an architecture that's able to navigate that very flexibly and not having to hard fork every time they have to take a different technical path. And that's a very, very big and unique value prop that not other ecosystems have. And then the fourth one, and also very relevant, it all starts and ends with the developers. And since the beginning and all throughout today, we still have a very active developer community all across the world. And because of our ethos, because of uh, our technical vision, we've been able to attract a very, very talented and very unique type of developer that we should definitely tap into and empower to build cool things. So then, where does Velocity Labs fit into, into all of these? Um, we see that the problems that we need to solve for DeFi to take off are actually not that hard compared to other problems like shared sequencers or uh, other things that Ethereum or other ecosystems are, are, are navigating. Our problems aren't hard to solve. You just need a very focused team that is full stack, understand the problems, understands the ecosystems, and have a, a, it has a, an entire focus on, on how to solve them. So these are the three things that uh, Velocity Labs is going to be focusing on in the future. So the first one is interoperability. We really want to start seeing these cross-chain use cases appear uh, in Polkadot, specifically around DeFi. We want to improve accessibility. We want to make it as easy and as frictionless as possible for users and liquidity to land on any parachain. And then third, uh, we want to empower products to start being launched on Polkadot. We already have a very good base of products, which I mentioned, uh, but we really want to start showcasing the power of Substrate through products, which I think is the best way to communicate that value prop. So let me, let me go a little bit more into detail. So interoperability, we see 
kind of these subdivision in, in, in two, two, major, two major things. So the first one is chain abstraction. One of the complexities of having a multi-charted ecosystem is that UX becomes really fragmented. You also start having a lot of custom infrastructure requirements. If a block explorer needs to integrate with Akala, it's different than integrating with Hydra, and et cetera, et cetera. This problem obviously compounds that we get more and more and more chains. Um, and we need to work towards more ecosystem standardization. Then composability is basically using XCM. Um, Polkadot, as I mentioned, has been built under the pillar of interoperability. And as of today, even token transfers across Polkadot are very hard for a Polkadot user. So imagine for a non-Polkadot user. And then we also want to coordinate with the ecosystem and kind of ideate around cross-chain use cases and not go towards the path of everyone building the same thing on their chain just because it's easier. So the way that we see this path is better tooling leads to better developer experience, leads to better UX, and it will result in more applications being launched. Then the second point is accessibility. It's, it's not even much of a technical issue. Again, it's a focus issue. Um, so one of the things that uh, Velocity is doing is managing the relationships with centralized exchanges, stablecoin issuers, custodians, on-ramps, oracles, on behalf of the ecosystem, and kind of guiding them through how to integrate in a more scalable way. Centralized exchanges, now we're guiding them to integrate through Asset Hub, where they can support DOT, stablecoins, and any parachain token. The same for um, on-ramps, custodians, et cetera, et cetera. And this is in its very early stages. So we think that's going to improve accessibility a lot. Uh, system parachain tooling and front ends. As of today, even though Asset Hub wasn't built as a consumer-facing parachain, uh, we think it still needs to have at least a UI where people can interact with it, people can mint, register assets, transfer assets, uh, which is the main utility of, of, of Asset Hub. And we want to do the same with BridgeHub. We want to make it very user-friendly. It doesn't matter if the user wants to go through Hydra's UI. We want to give them an option of a unified UI where they can move assets across the ecosystem from just one UI. And then the last one is dot liquidity and, and, and market making BD. Um, as you've probably seen in, in OpenGov, there's a lot of new initiatives coming in asking the Treasury for liquidity incentives, something that we've, uh, we've promoted in the background. Uh, we've, we've given these people a lot of, a lot of input and, and kind of guidance on these proposals. And then also market making relationships with before were handled by, by Parity and, and we're going to take those over. And then lastly, the product part. We do want to take sort of a, a venture studio model. We are building a full stack team, a product team, and go to market team. So we're going to have all those capabilities to build tooling infrastructure in the beginning of uh, Velocity's lifetime. But once the ecosystem is DeFi ready, um, we want to support founders. We want to turn ideas into actual products, get them funding, engineering, product support, and actually turn those into viable products. Again, it's the best way to showcase our tech stack. It's not talking about XEM. It's not talking about Jam. It's actually showing, look, this is what you can do in Polkadot, and you can do it nowhere else. And we want to be a part of that. So the go-to-market strategy for us. So initially, we're basically just, just launched. So we're securing funding sources. We're building out the, the, the core team. And one of the main initiatives that we're going to be launching is the DeFi infrastructure and tooling bounty. This is a six and a half million bounty that we uh, already proposed and got approved by the, by the, by the community. Uh, we onboarded super good curators, so we have uh, the perspective of the builders, uh, CTO of, um, of Moonbeam, CTO of Akala, CTO of Centrifuge, of Hydra. Uh, we also wanted a wallet participation, so we have Nova Wallet as a curator. And we also have Giotto kind of uh, as, an, as an activist. So the idea is to uh, fund infrastructure integrations. These integrations generally come at a cost. Um, before, sometimes the Foundation of Parity would be funding it. But now that we have the treasury and this bounty, we want to fund directly from the bounty and also uh, support tooling builders. Right now, the, co the current reality for tooling developers is that they have to go either through Web3 grants program, which doesn't really fit a lot of the tooling use cases, or 
they have to go directly through a referenda on OpenGov. And it's just very clunky. It requires them to do a lot of politics. And at the end of the day, the incentives are on the line because they get the money up front and they're not really incentivized to kind of do the best job and devel the, deliver the best product possible. So we're gonna kind of mimic sort of a Web3 Foundation's grants program, but led by the community, by the builders, and funded by the treasury. So that's gonna be our first initiative. The second one is we are building some things in-house. Uh, one of the core focuses is a generalized XCM SDK where any parachain application or wallet can plug into it. Right now we have around six to eight different SDKs. Each parachain is developed in its own. It's very specific to their use case. It's very specific to the tokens and, and, and paths that they need. Um, and at the same time, all of them have to maintain it. And they're maintaining basically the same piece of code. So we want to generalize it as much as possible. And that also allow us to start creating a bit of token standards, XCM standards across the ecosystem and kind of make this UX experience a lot less fragmented. And then lastly, the build and advice. We want to be an advisor to the DeFi teams coming into Polkadot and again, provide uh, engineering, product, go-to-market expertise and funding as well. So the team, as I mentioned, me as, as, um, as the leader of the team and the CEO, but I have with me, I'm, I'm standing in shoulder of giants. I have uh, Jack Hoop, CEO of Hydra, who's going to come in as a founder and advisor. I have Lucas, co-founder of Centrifuge, again, founder and advisor. And Alexi, also the founder and CEO of Interlay, coming in as founder and advisor. Uh, we're also bringing other engineers that have been in the, in the space for, for some time. So we are active participants in the Polkadot ecosystem. We have skin in the game. We understand the pain points. And now that we have kind of a focus team to go out and solve them, uh, we think that DeFi is going to have a very bright future uh, in Polkadot. And that's it for the, for the chat. Thank you very much for listening.